All right, we are checking out another Tesla video by CNBC. Um, we're checking it out. On this channel, we react to Tesla news. I do my live reactions and give my thoughts on what's going on as a longtime Tesla. Um, I follow Tesla for a very long time, and I've been buying the stock since about 2018. Nonstop, I've been buying the stock. It's the only stock in my portfolio, and um, I kind of I know kind of a lot about the company but let's check this out and let's see what's going on here let's bring in somebody who knows about this market Mark Bad Fields. News. he's the former ford ceo and a cnbc contributor mark first question i have for you i look at this it's fascinating and i think man if you did this in the united states you'd have a federal antitrust investigation in about five minutes wouldn't you absolutely i mean talk about antitrust violations about uh, trying to coordinate pricing right. yeah this would not fly in the u.s I mean, this is literally the automakers getting together and setting a floor for prices. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, at the end of the day, this mm. was pushed by the Chinese government and Tesla's competitors, in particular, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Price because you know, they basically told the China uh, Dealer or Association of Automobile Manufacturers, listen, you guys got to get together. Tesla, you started this price war. The health of the automotive uh, infrastructure and ecosystem in China is extremely important. We as the government have put a lot of policies in place this year to support it. And we can't afford to have our own Chinese uh, homegrown competitors uh, continue to burn through cash and have a price disruption. But so I'll tell you what. Okay, so what's going on here? So they're putting a, a cap on how low the prices can go. Um, Year-to-date performance, Tesla's up 123%. Price war truce, EV maker year-to-date performance. Uh, NEO is down 1%. BYD up 36%. XBang up 44%. So they are saying, no, you can't cut. Because what Tesla's doing, right, it's, it's cutting prices to, um, if they see demand is like waning a bit, like, oh, wait, there's not, not a lot of demand. Okay, we can just drop the price a bit, and then demand will grow as exponentially as they can do that because they have a 20% margin. So they have room to even like drop it even further, 10%, 5%. They're still making a profit, which um, BYD is making about 5% uh, margins anyway. So they can drop it like 15% if they want um, and still make profit. So they have huge pricing power. So what, China's saying you can't drop your prices anymore or... Is it like a hard you can't do it or we're let, or they're saying like you like don't do it, but like you can if you want type of deal. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Mark, as an investor, I would look at this and say well, this might be a signal that Tesla can't win in China. Right. Because the thumb is on the scale for the homegrown competitors. The government is literally saying to Tesla, stop doing the things you need to do to win in China. Well, in my view, this is bad news for for, for Tesla because it basically handcuffs them. If right. you think about it, their Chinese competitors are coming out with very, very good product. And the reasons that Tesla took the price cuts earlier this year is because they were losing market share. So when you take that pricing lever away, the good news for Tesla is their margins will be better because they won't be cutting their pricing. The bad news is their market share will continue to go down and their volume could continue to struggle, which means their plant will be running at under capacity, which is going to be a big drain on them because that's their biggest plant. I'll tell you what, I just finished a documentary on China. Hold on a second. Their plant will be running under capacity. I don't think so because Tesla will be shipping. Tesla, that's their main export hub. So they send a lot of cars outside of China from that factory. So um, I don't think that they'll have to like cap or, or lower production on the China factory. I think they could just export more. If, if anything, right? But we'll, it's yet to be determined if this will affect them at all because Tesla's no matter kind of what price they're at, like they still sell pretty high. Um, and yeah, and they'll be able to export. So I don't know what he's talking about, how like they'll have to like slow down the, their production but because it's the main export hub. So I don't know. All right, let's see what else these guys got. Chinese corporate espionage against American companies. It's airing Here's the plug. It's airing regularly on CNBC these days. Uh, but in that documentary, one of the experts that we interviewed said that it, he was in China talking to auto suppliers, the people who supply parts to Tesla in China. And he said one of those companies told him a Chinese competitor of Tesla came to them and said, give us the same parts that you give to Tesla. Exactly the same. We'll fit them into our cars. So 
if that's the environment that you're operating in in Tesla, they're telling you you can't do your own pricing strategy, your competitors are buying your parts from your own suppliers, how can you possibly make any headway there? Well, listen, they, they have a decent business there. It is their biggest market. And Eamon, there is, there is a lot of value to Tesla worldwide to competing in China, not only because of economies of scale, but when you're facing the most competitive competitors in China, which they are right now, they can take those learnings and use them in other markets. But the bottom line is they, the Chinese government you know, with this agreement basically just made it a lot harder for their business. And you know the visit that Musk made about two, three weeks ago wasn't to just sit down and have tea. It was the government saying, you will probably do this or you're going to face some consequences. Yeah, you know, I flagged this in the intro. They use this term abnormal pricing. They say we, we want to avoid abnormal pricing. Uh, but the but Tesla's been doing some abnormal pricing here in the United States, which has gotten... I want to see this agreement. What do you mean by abnormal pricing? Because Tesla, like, they're not crazy low prices. Like, I would think abnormal pricing means extremely low and no one can compete with um, their extremely low pricing. But all of the EV automakers in China are selling at a loss. So their pricing is low uh, already. So they're all selling at a loss. They're all losing money. So, um, yeah, I don't know what, maybe they have, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. And it's competitors here a little bit worried, right? I mean, they, they've done this price cut strategy here. Are their prices here abnormal? Well, they're, no, they're, they're looking not. at it. They're, first off, they have pricing freedom, right? They're looking at their business. And all, Elon has basically said, listen, I'm Elon. willing to sacrifice <laughs> margins for volume because the EV market is growing. Uh, the established competitors are just introducing product now. So it's a little bit of a land grab. And, you know, he's making, for, from his perspective, for Tesla, uh, a rational business judgment. But you can't do that now in China because of these handcuffs that are placed on him. Now, keep in mind, even this pledge was non-binding. So, oh, you know, Tesla may decide at a certain point to pull don't know. the plug out of the grenade and, you know, let it explode. I don't know. From there. You do a deal but with the Chinese knows? government, it's pretty binding, isn't it? Well, when they say, uh, you know, you have complete freedom to follow this or not, yeah. uh, they say <laughs> that with a wink and a nod. Okay, so it's non-binding, but you don't really want to mess with the Chinese government, right? But it's non-binding. You can do it. You could you can comply if you want. Um, what and what do they mean by like like extraordinary price pricing? Like, what do they mean by that? Because like ICE cars are around are cheaper than EV cars, right? So do they mean extraordinary as to where no other companies can compete? But it's it's that's the market like it's a competitive market like i don't understand what they mean by that but um we're gonna have to see in the next quarter if this affects tesla at all um are they gonna follow are they not gonna be able to drop prices anymore um or yeah we'll see because yeah all the other ev makers byd is making a little bit of profit but not much right so i'm curious to see Price cuts. Here we go. Tesla's price cuts in China, 13%, 5%, 9%, uh, 12 9%. So it's not that, I don't know, not that extreme. But it competes. It Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we're going to have to see in the next quarter if this affects Tesla at all. I think this is kind of an overreaction. Um, if they were to say these are mandatory, like you cannot cut prices anymore, Tesla, you got to keep your prices high. And then Chinese automakers, you can keep your prices low. Like it's, it's kind of strange, but um, we're going to just have to wait and see if this is a big deal or not, because it is their main export hub. They send, a, they send a lot of cars out of China. So um, it might not even affect them at all, but we're going to have to see in the next quarter. And we'll also see in through the um, insurance, there's a way to see, how many sales are going on per week by the insurance numbers, how many Teslas are, are insured. So, well, I'll follow that and I'll let you guys know in a upcoming video. All right. Uh, I'll see you next time.